Everyone has an idea of where they think the future will go. And they also have ideas of where they want the future to go. Most of the time, however, neither become reality. It is impossible to know where the future is going, but we can guide it in the right direction. What if we could see how different decisions can affect the world down the line? I've been a licensed architect for the last 23 years. It's amazing to see how much the industry has changed since I started 23 years ago. We have new materials like Figo board, which practically allows us to defy gravity. You can't go down the street without seeing buildings levitating off the ground. There are buildings on every block that we wouldn't have dreamed of seeing 23 years ago. This is my favorite building. It's the Trebuchet headquarters in New York. It cost about 2.7 billion. Absolutely. When you finance something that becomes an icon, where people come from around the world to see it, 21,357 employees, it's the biggest center for employment in the world. Creating something as important as that is pretty priceless, wouldn't you say? It's one of the biggest wastes of money of all time. It's the most expensive building in the world with the potential to house the most employees, but you know where it ranks in populated buildings? Not even the top five. It's number seven. They thought it would be a good idea to consolidate all their work centers around the country into one location, and they thought that it would give a little boost to the local economy of New York. The building displaced thousands of people who were already living there. It was a serious detriment, and without the actual people around, they couldn't survive. Then there's the expectation that thousands of trebuchet employees are gonna move in and leave their homes moving to New York, but we knew they weren't. Not only did the presence of the headquarters disrupt the city, but it didn't bring the economic benefits that they expected. As time went on, the buildings started to age, and slowly this ideal city center, I mean, it became the center of poverty in the city. All of the surrounding areas were unable to continue doing their thing just because there was no one there to survive and operate. The thing is, you just can't save a city with one building, no matter how much money you put into it. Why do you think the new Trebuchet headquarters has been the topic of controversy since its completion? I think that's a very good question. So we are actually still in the transition process, so Sure, it may be a little controversial, but anything this grand would be, just give it a little time and I can guarantee that those figures will show that growth in the opposite direction. I don't think it was a failure at all. Trebuchet has had our best year in the last decade. New Rome wasn't built in a day. Give it time, New York will follow suit. It is crazy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to create uh, work that is what I was passionate about, and it just makes it so much better that other people have been passionate about it as well. First off, I want to say that it's a fantastic building. Uh, the use of it has just been poorly implemented. I was hired to design a building to hold over 20,000 people, which is exactly what I did. Uh, it was not my job to question my clients on the purpose of the building. Uh, the fact that they were completely out of touch with reality is on them, and not on me, the designer. Like I said, I was hired to do a job, and I did that job fairly well.
And what is Cityscape Prime, you ask? Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. And we know what we're knowing, but we can't say what we've seen. I mean, we all saw it coming, giving away our control to computers. How did we really think it was gonna go? I said it before, and I said it again. When's the last time you walked into a real building? I mean a real building, a sense of wonder. You don't, they took it away from us. You can never get a building, and I mean a real building, from a computer. Well, a real building, you know it when you see it. Are there any buildings in your life that make you say, wow? It gives you a sense of wonder. No, because you know exactly what you're going to get before you walk into it. That's what happens when you take quantity over quality. I mean, think about it. Who wouldn't take that offer? $8,000 for a building that I get to design? It was pretty much a no-brainer. It's not a church. It doesn't need to be unique. It just needs to work. You should have seen it, though. Back when we were in the first Art Techno building in New York, we had mobs of tourists every day. Everything changed when every new building was made by Traco or Alphabet, and we just slowly faded into the background with a building made out of aging technology. Would I ever go back? I mean, from a business perspective, just considering the time and cost, absolutely not. But honestly, the world has become bleak, and it would be interesting to have some creativity in the cities again. I went to undergrad for architecture, and I went to the workforce as the profession was disappearing. I saw these changes before they even happened. Do you think I wanted to work my life at Charge Hargan? No. The industry was destroyed and we were left with nothing. I'm the last architect. <laughs> not gonna lie, it is tough. There are not many of us left, seeing how the world is today. Honestly, it's sad. There are about three companies left that have created over 89% of new buildings in 2052. It's rare that architects get any commissions at all. Yeah, that was the idea. But you look at any neighborhood and just because you change the color of a wall or put a staircase on the other side of a room does not make it a unique building. It might be worse than all of the suburbs of the late 20th and 21st centuries. You would at least get some variation when traveling to a different neighborhood or city. But look at neighborhoods from Kansas to Abu Dhabi, they're the exact same. The same goes for cities too. Besides for a few buildings, almost every city skyline is indistinguishable from one another. Almost everyone I know lives in an Amazon house. They had this idea to build homes based on, you know, user profiles. And they mass produce all these modules based on those profiles. With their logistical prowess, they can create a new home and about a day from design to completion. It really makes it difficult to choose anything else unless, I mean, you want to spend a ton of money. Alphabet, Traco, I mean, they control the design of the cities and Amazon has the housing. That is true for pretty much everywhere on the planet. Could it have gone another way? I mean, I suppose so. If the approach was different, if we had people that weren't just concerned about making money and trying to corner the design market, creating all these new platforms. Maybe if the designers worked with the technology instead of fighting against it, it'd work out a little bit better for them. It's nothing new. We've seen it happen countless of times. Designers became the farmers who sell at farmers markets and Amazon and Traco became Tyson and Cargill. The designers became a niche little thing that would sometimes be used on special occasions. But don't be fooled. 
the very few architects out there, I mean, people will choose convenience over quality, what, nine times out of 10? If the technology didn't exist, I mean, sure, we could have continued doing things the way we were before, but I mean, once people got a taste of the new technology and how quickly it creates everything and how cheap it is, there's no putting that cat back in the bag. That sounds very impressive, Mr. Hoppelganger. Um, how long did you say you've been working on this? Oh, absolutely. I've been working on this since I've been in college, and we have three factories open with two more on the way. So how did you come up with the idea? I was trying to think about what the future of design would be. There's been a huge trend toward automation in every industry, and I thought it would be foolish to assume it wouldn't follow suit in architecture. I very much believe that if you want something done, you need to do it yourself. I had absolutely no faith that someone like Elon Musk wouldn't show up and do it in a terrible, uninspired way. No offense to Martian President Elon Musk. So what can you tell us about your company? We're a manufacturing and design company. I started creating the software seven years ago with the goal to automate the design process. A little while later, I realized that if the software could be paired with the modular building system, the entire process could be automated in a rapid process. Someone can design a house and the construction can start within a day. We have an average time of five days to complete a home. Is this a luxury service for people? No, not at all. Our business model is very friendly towards the consumers. The only things that they need to worry about are the cost of land and materials. Construction and design-wise, it's practically free compared to the conventional methods. Not only that, but we are also working with local governments to subsidize land and material costs to provide comfortable and quality affordable housing. Not only are they practically free, but they are the exact same as our direct-to-consumer service. Wow, well, it really sounds like you're shaking up the housing industry. Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. What do you think is the defining style of architecture right now? Art techno, for sure. I'm Peel Hubert. I've been a practicing architect for 23 years, and currently, I design modules for ArcChain. I don't know the entire technical aspect to it, but architects and designers, they create modules or certain parts and details of building and they go into a larger database. And then that database is used to create larger scale buildings in the future down the line. And it's weird when you go into your friend's kitchen five years after you design something and see it and effect there. This is the Trebuchet headquarters. Yes, uh, we originally used an early version of ArcChain, and thankfully when we needed expansions two years ago, ArcChain allowed us to just go back in and add what we needed. It cost a little under 400 million at first, but now we are pushing 600 after our recent expansions. Probably 10 years ago, we would be double that just from having to start from scratch again for our expansion. I am Yar Jackson, and I am the founder of the biggest arc chain firm in Europe. I am trained in architecture. I hold my license, but mostly I design modules for arc chain. Occasionally, we design buildings from scratch, but it is just terribly inefficient. And from a business perspective, it's a lot more worth our time to design 30 modules in the time that it would take to design one building. Extremely. We work less hours because we don't have to problem solve or question our designs as much. Uh, we also get to see our designs expressed in so many different scenarios that we wouldn't possibly be able to think of on our own. Art chain? Is it perfect? I mean, no, but it keeps the costs low, the work fast, and we still have real people creating the parts of the buildings. Could we forgo human input all together and expedite the process even more? I mean, sure. but we would lose that part of design that gives it life. So who's to say? All we know is that when it comes down to it, the way things are now, it just works. The truth is, nobody knows what the future of architecture will be. 
I believe that we will see automation take over almost every aspect of our lives, including architecture. Prior to the 1940s, before alarm clocks were common household items, there was a profession of people called knocker-uppers. The job of these people was to go to their clients' homes and wake them up in the morning, typically by knocking on their doors or windows. After the 1940s, when alarm clocks became inexpensive, people stopped using knocker-uppers and put faith into these new automatic contraptions. There were some people, however, who did not trust the new technology and continued using knocker-uppers into the 1970s. More time has passed, and now we live in a world where alarm clocks are just applications on our phones. Technology has always been advancing since the beginning of time, and there have always been people who are skeptical of new advancements. In architecture, there have also been a fair number of skeptics throughout time. Even now, there are many people who prefer to hand draw their designs instead of using CAD software. Who is to say whether the pen is mightier than the mouse? The point is that technology is simultaneously advancing and being pushed against, which can create dissonance within the field. Skepticism can be beneficial as it restricts advancements from being pushed unchecked. We can assume that in the next couple of years, architectural design will become automated. While some architects are adamantly against this notion, regardless of what happens, it is something that should be discussed. To expand on my personal thoughts about automated design, I believe that automation will happen, and it is up to the architecture community to decide how. We can either ignore this impending storm and wait for tech companies to make their way into the field and offer cheap, uninspired, mass-produced designs. Alternatively, we can work on automating design ourselves, making sure that it is done in a way that respects the work of architects and can be used to make affordable structures. Automated design could mean that buildings can be designed at unbelievable speeds. If these automated designs also consider the construction aspect of a building, the entire process of design to completion can happen faster than we could ever imagine. When the entire process of creating buildings takes almost no time at all, the overall cost will decrease significantly, and the only expenses would be land and material costs. If this process is completed by a company that can forego excessive profit margins, every structure can be affordable. In the right hands, automated design could effectively end the housing crisis. Not only this, but every building created with automated design can be completely unique, making for a much more interesting built environment. It really comes down to us. Do we wait and hope that another industry doesn't seize the opportunity of the huge potential for automated architectural design while we continue to revel in our process that retains control but forgoes efficiency, wasting time and resources? Or do we embrace automation and control our own future? Little boxes on the hillside Little boxes made of ticky-tacky Little boxes on the hillside Little boxes all the same There's a green one and a pink one And a blue one and a yellow one They're all made out of ticky-tacky And they all look just the same And the people in the houses Are went to the universe